Imagine this. You're in a meeting where you and your co-workers are talking about some of the new products your company is planning to launch. You have a couple of questions you want to ask your co-workers, but asking them verbally might be difficult to keep track of because it's easy to forget who said what. What if we could turn this into a series of polls? Well, in a Microsoft Teams meeting, you can. There is a way to quickly and easily create polls straight from a meeting. Let's have a look. In your Teams meeting, select the Apps option in the bar at the top of the screen. From there, search for Polls. In the new pop-up that now appears, click Save. The app has now been added to the meeting. You're immediately greeted by a new sidebar with a couple of suggestion polls that you can add to your meeting. At the very bottom of the sidebar, you can launch an instant poll as well to quickly gauge the opinion of the others in your meeting. There is no difference between these options besides the icon being displayed. Now let's go to the top and create a new poll by clicking the New Poll button. You're greeted with five options to choose from. Let's check them out. With multiple choice, you can add a question with multiple rigid options for your meeting participants to choose from. You can add up to 12 options, add an image to visualize your question, and you can allow multiple selections to be made. The quiz option works in a very similar manner. The big difference between the multiple choice option though is that the meeting participants must choose the correct answers from the list. You can either make it so that one option is the correct one, or you can select multiple options by allowing multiple selections. You can add up to 12 options and add an image to visualize your question. WordCloud allows meeting participants to answer freely to a question you ask by typing it into the text field. These answers will then be displayed into a dynamic word cloud in the results screen. This works best when the answers given are short and snappy, and you can also add an image to visualize your question again. Rating allows meeting participants to rate what you ask them to rate. By default, this is between 1 or 5 stars, but you can change this to 4, 3 or even 2, and you can even change the symbol to several different options. So you're not stuck using a star. You can also label the lowest and the highest rating to whatever you want, and of course you can add an image to visualize. Finally, we got the ranking option. With this option, you can have your meeting participants rank different options you can fill in. They do this by dragging these options up and down the list, with their most preferred options at the top and their least preferred ones at the bottom. You can add up to 10 options, you can shuffle these options around to have this become more random, and you can add an image to visualize your question. Those are all the poll types you can insert, and you can add up to 9 of these polls in a row to create a nice little bundle. Before you publish this poll, you can change a few settings. You can enable the recording of names of everyone who responded, you can choose to share aggregated results with your respondents, and you can enable your co-presenters to edit polls while they're still at draft. When you're ready to start this poll, click Launch Now. The participants in your meeting will now get this window on their screen where they can start answering the questions you have put into your poll. And you can even participate yourself. Once you're done with your own poll, you can view the results in that same little window. You can also go to the Polls sidebar and click the three dots underneath your poll to view the results without having to go through your own poll yourself. You can now see per question what everybody answered, how many answered correctly, what words they typed for the word cloud, what the ratings ended up being, and how participants ranked your options. Pretty cool, right? Have you created a useful poll that you'd like to reuse? Well, you can do just that by clicking the My Recent Polls button next to the New Poll button. Here you'll find all the polls you created in the last 30 days. Just click one to reuse it. After a meeting is done, you can find all the polls in the meeting's chat, and then by going to the Polls tab. Here you get the same options as in the polls sidebar that you get during a meeting, and you can easily access all the polls and the results of them. If you click the arrow next to the Back to Question button, you can export the results as well. When you do that, you get an Excel file with a table inside where all the answers are neatly sorted. Did you know you can also send a poll to someone via chat? Well, yes you can! This is a little more limited though. To do this, click the triple dots under the typing field and find the Polls app. Once you click it, you can create a multiple choice poll for the coworker you're chatting with or for the group you're in. You can add up to 12 options and allow multiple selections if you want to. 
You can also record the name of the respondents, which will only be visible to you, and share the results with your respondents if you want to. And that's it for the Polls app. Now you can create super handy and powerful polls to help you gauge your co-workers' thoughts, quiz their knowledge, and much more. Now go ahead and try it out for yourself and become the Polls Master. Good luck!